It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. As we're getting closer and closer to the release of King Kong vs. Godzilla, naturally, of course, people are picking teams on whether or not who's gonna win. Some say Godzilla's gonna win, some people are gonna say like King Kong's gonna win. I personally gonna go with Team Godzilla because obviously Team Godzilla is the king of the monsters, right? However, even though there's like more and more interest in the movie, I noticed that there's like a lot of articles that have been coming out that are just really terrible, especially from like screen rants. And so for this video, I'm gonna respond to yet another article that was done by Screen Rants because honestly, their takes about like giant monster movies are just quite awful. Legendary Monsterverse has been more faithful to who Godzilla is and has handled the monster better than its owners Toho did in Shin Godzilla. Look guys, I'm not gonna lie. That headline made me cringe. It made me cringe so much. Yes, I do in fact welcome the idea of new fans coming to the franchise thanks to King Kong versus Godzilla. But come on now, this has to be like the most casual non-fan take I could possibly imagine. First and foremost, we know for a fact that the 1954 Godzilla was like super ultra serious. Like Godzilla was like the villain the whole entire movie. He was a byproduct of the atomic bomb. And so naturally Godzilla was a humongous threat against like the whole entire country of Japan, right? And so naturally, and Shin Godzilla, he basically is like, you know, the villain again. He's actually like a byproduct of like what's happened in Fukushima and these other kind of places for that nuclear disaster. And so naturally, the tone is very much similar in comparison to like, you know, the 1954 film. Now, Legendary Picture Godzilla is of course very respectful. I'm not gonna lie, there's one aspect that I do like that the character is in fact respectful, but the betrayal for Godzilla in those kind of movies are different in comparison to like, you know, how they portrayed it in Shin Godzilla and the 1954 film. Because basically, during that time period from like, you know, the 1960s and the 1970s, Godzilla has been portrayed as like a hero to humanity. And so naturally, the legendary pictures version of Godzilla is based upon the 60s and 70s films. Is that a bad thing? Of course not. But to sit here and say that, of course, what they do for like the monsterverse is more closer to Godzilla than Shin Godzilla is a very bad taste. The monsterverse has handled Godzilla better than Toho did in Shin Godzilla. There has been two live action versions of the King of the Monsters since Toho bought the franchise to a halt after Godzilla Final Wars in 2004. After acquiring the rights, Legendary and Warner Brothers made what is the second American adaptation of Godzilla, which was released in 2014, and has followed it up with a sequel in 2019. A third movie, Godzilla vs. Kong, is coming in 2020. Meanwhile, the renewed interest in the mascot has caused Toho to make Shin Godzilla in 2016. Shin Godzilla has shipped away from the standard formula of Toho Godzilla movies. Instead of defending Japan from other creatures, Godzilla's main enemy in the reboot movie is humanity itself. After arriving on land, Godzilla's destruction of attacks forces from the Japanese government to go to great lengths to defeat him. Over the course of the movie, Godzilla goes through multiple evolutions and causes a great deal of problems for the movie's human protagonists. Nevertheless, Godzilla is defeated by the end of the movie. Though a sequel was teased by the ending, Toho expressed interest in going into a different direction with his next Godzilla movies. Let's go back to the past, shall we? When Godzilla 1954 first came out, it obviously did not have any sort of monster for Godzilla to fight with. And so naturally, the monster, the villain, the whole entire movie was just Godzilla himself because he was, you know, a byproduct of like nuclear explosions and so that's why he wanted to attack humanity and that's why humanity wanted to attack against Godzilla. However, the first ever monster movie in the franchise in which Godzilla started to fight against like these other monsters was like 1955 Godzilla vs. Again, which has like Anguirus as his first ever monster opponent and after that it was King Kong and these other kind of monsters that we know today. 
And so naturally, of course, the filmmakers gradually made Godzilla from, like, you know, a threat to humanity to as a savior of, like, humanity. And so depending on the direction, Godzilla is either a villain or a superhero or an anti-hero. It largely depends on the vision of the director. And so naturally, of course, and the 2016 Shin Godzilla is based upon the interpretation that was done by the original filmmakers when the first movie first came out. As with the most recent Godzilla movie from Toho, the film has naturally caused fans to compare it to what Legendary Pictures has done with the character. Interesting, the Mercer version of Godzilla is more familiar to the audience than the version that appears in Shin Godzilla. A lot of it has to do with its design. Every filmmaker has his own take on what Godzilla should look like, but be careful not to differ too much from the traditional appearance. Perhaps the biggest mistake that Sony made with 1998 Godzilla is by completely dropping his old look in favor of a new one. Fans were turned off by this Godzilla because the movie was even released. Literally changed the character the monster as well, but kept the elements that the fans loved, such as the Dolphro fans on Godzilla's back, the blue atomic breath, and more. Shin Godzilla embraced the horror genre with his monstrous tone, but it has gone too far with that. There was a grotesque Godzilla with an incredibly odd transformation that were unlike anything that has been done in a Godzilla movie. It doesn't help that he was given powers like the ability to shoot atomic rays out of his tails that really didn't fit him. Legendary Godzilla, on the other hand, is more like the monsters that audience remember from the Soa, Heisei, and Malaria eras. Sure, if you're a stinky casual and never seen a Godzilla movie before, and probably, you know, saw like the monster fights and only the monster fights, of course, the audience will be very familiar with that. But if you're like a fan like me, who's seen like all the movies, you know the various type of transformations for Godzilla. And so naturally, what they did in Shin Godzilla is in line with the 1954 film. What they're doing with Legendary Pictures is in line with the 1960s and the 70s film. So no, of course, audience who are casuals will say, well, gee, what happened in Shin Godzilla is totally out of touch for Godzilla, even though they probably have never seen the original ones to begin with. This is so stupid, like, it's obvious like this person is not, you know, familiar with the lore of the franchise, I haven't seen all the movies, so I don't know why he wrote this article really, unless of course he wants to just get clicks or whatever. But anyway, what do you guys think about this article? Tell me in the comment section down below, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.